everything's wrapped with you know um, college football stars, ex stars, and stuff. And then fast forward to the Saturday, we walk in and there's you know stuff, Giltinis, the, the baby blue and the pink, and um, you know then it felt like home. It um, it really felt like home, and it's um, yeah, it was a great experience to play in. You know, and that field is literally like a carpet, like it is. Like I could put that in my, in my living room. I'll be happy with that. <laughs> um, so that's amazing for, for backs and especially the outside backs. We like to have a fast field and that's what we got. This week on MLR Mike Check, we are so lucky to have DTH Vander Murphy, part of the LA Guiltinis man of the match against the New England Free Jacks this past weekend. And your inaugural season in major league rugby as well as the teams welcome dth how are you thank you very much yeah i'm great um you know it's been a long time coming this uh this game on the, on the weekend that's just gone by um i think there's a lot of guys who've you know signed contracts over a year ago and been waiting during the COVID situation in different parts of the world and you know, I'm just relieved that we've actually had the go ahead and we've played our first game and um, yeah, it feels good to be back playing rugby. Walk me through the first match, the butterflies, the excitement, the adrenaline. We're going to get to what you did during it, but just walk me through like the sights and the sounds of everything. Obviously, when you walk into that stadium, you're just the wow factor. Even with nobody in the stadium, um, you still get that wow factor and, um, you know, it's all the history that's gone before us and so on. So you want to show a bit of respect to that and that obviously gets the butterflies going the juices flowing so uh it didn't take much to to get up for your first game not to speak that a lot of us a majority of us haven't played a game in over a year so um with a combination of you know such a cool venue and the, the lack of rugby over the last year um you know everyone was just super pumped to get out on the field and and play a bit of rugby again um my one of my teammates uh jp smith I like, it's such a simple way he says it, but he just says, let's play ball. Like, you know, I just, that's just what it's all about. You know, we feel like kids again playing rugby and um, yeah, it's best. It's very exciting. All right. Well, you guys came out swinging. If we're going to play ball, you guys came out swinging six try statement. Two of those were from you, my friend, man of the match. And like you just said, you hadn't played in so long, but behind the scenes, what goes in to making such a loud statement like that in the inaugural match? Now that people have asked me this question sort of in this last week, I guess, um, leading up to that game, you reflect back on, you know, like I said, again, the year that's gone by my last game with my Glasgow Warriors team teammates, um, selling of a house, you're training in your in a, in a three months of we're not allowed to leave our houses. You train inside your house or in your backyard or whatever. Eventually, we moved from from uh, Scotland back to Canada. We were able to train a bit there by yourself. Then rugby was um, practices was back on for club rugby. So I went to my local rugby club, James Bay, trained a bit with them. Then we got shut down there. Um, you know, then you start trying to find your way back into it again. Where can I go to a gym? Where can I do running sessions? You get kicked off rug or, or football pitches because you're not you haven't booked it or whatever it might be. So. The journey has just been so long uh, to this day, and um, and I yeah, obviously I'm grateful that I was able to cross the whitewash twice in the game. Um, it was huge team tries. I think uh, you know all the all six guys that scored. There was not you know there was an individual br brilliance that got you over the line. It was a, a team effort, and um, um, the time that we spent as a, as a group in Maui, I think, is going to reap benefits now when we come into um, to the season. So I'm just glad we're here and, and and firing in the first game. Tell me about Maui and and what went on there because I wasn't there. I didn't see anything. I only know what what the team is showing. Tell me about that. I must say I've I've never trained this that hard in my life. Um, we were quite high up on the mountain as well where we did train. So whether that had you know so, some sort of a high altitude training effect. Um, We'll, we'll be able to tell now when, when games come to play and roll it week after week. But um, you know, we train so hard. We go from, from an early, early morning um, rugby field session, which, which was two hours, two and a half hours some days. And then we drive 40 minutes to a gym and have an hour gym session. And the focus is always to try and get your day done early doors so we can have the afternoons free. Um, so, um, you know, we had a lot of fun in the afternoons. We had some team activities. We're, there's a bit more leadway there and in, in Hawaii, there, was, there wasn't very strict COVID 
uh, protocols um, with just the, pure, the numbers that they, they don't have many numbers on COVID. So it was, it, was a, it was a fun environment to be in and a, and a relaxing environment, but at the same time we worked really, really hard. Obviously showed off all that hard work in the first game. Were you guys able to celebrate? Was there something you guys were able to do to kind of, you know, mark the occasion, not only for the guys playing the game, but, you know, the whole team, the, the franchise? Well, you, you obviously have your your breakdown right after the game in, in, the, um, in the stadium. So we all enjoyed a beer, a Gillies beer. Um, so our owners come up with a beer. So that's obviously really fitting that that was ready for our first game. And obviously a first victory is, is something that we all had focused on from the get go when we got to Maui is that we have to win our first game and set the tone. So, um, you know, that's kind of sort of where we get together and tighter as a group is in the change rooms right after. And then we got back, obviously couldn't go out in LA. You can't mingle with the other teams and stuff like that. So we came back to the hotel here in Oxnard and, um, uh, we had all the families that some of the some of the, the the other players families are here and they were all in the team room waiting for us we had a bit of food there and a few drinks there and then it was just a calm you know, kind of easy night but um, it's all about team bonding I guess so you have had already an illustrious career before major league rugby 61 caps in Canada what was so appealing about Major League Rugby and paint me a picture of how all of this came to be. It's kind of a funny one, really. I I didn't really know where I was going to go right after um, with the Glasgow thing. Um, I'd always thought about coming to the MLR, um, being closer to home, uh, closer to family and friends who can come and visit. Um, and then actually a friend of mine from, from Canada called and said, Hey, listen here. Um, one of my old teammates, uh, no, sorry, one of my old coaches has just reached out to me. He was a coach in, in Calgary back in 2003, Darren Coleman. Um, and he's asking for any Canadian guys available that's, you know, out of contract. And I thought you were out of contract. So do you mind if I put, a, put you guys in touch on Facebook? So here I go. I add Cole DC, our coach, on Facebook. And we start talking on Facebook, uh, Messenger, and so on. And then Next thing you know, we we're having a face, you know, fa uh, FaceTime call, and you know he's he pitched me what the 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 direction that the club wants to go in, and um, you know I was pretty much just uh, pretty much just said where to sign. Like I was really sold this California dream, and this is in this is in February. COVID had obviously just started creeping in then, but nobody knew where we we're gonna go. So this California dream was, you know, coming over with my family, be on the beaches, enjoying, you know, the sunshine, all that kind of stuff. And then all of a sudden COVID hits and we're in lockdowns. And, you know, is the MLR gonna go ahead? The MLR gets moved back, you know, all these different scenarios just kept popping up and people keep asking, where are you going next year? I'm like, well, I'm going to LA. They're like, you wanna go there? That's where all the COVID is. Like yeah, I'm going there. And um, so, yeah, it's, a, it's been a crazy, crazy process. Like I, I've i never in my life dealt with a, you know, a, a deal being done that way. Um, but now I'm here. I'm happy. I'm smiling and I'm um, loving being back playing rugby. Well, it's paid off. And you mentioned family. I feel like we never talk enough about family and the support that they give their spouses, whether it's on the field or, you know, wherever it may be. And you have yeah. a beautiful family, your wife, Jillian, your children. How have they supported you throughout all this madness and, and ultimately getting that California dream? It's huge. Like, uh, I got like, obviously three blonde hair kids, you know, that image of them being on a beach in California just was the picture that I had in my head straight away. Um, yeah, my wife's my rock and the biggest supporter um, of my game. And, and, you know, selfishly or, or unselfishly, she's, you know, put her career sort of on the back burner. She's been an unbelievable mom. Um, and she's really pushed me to, you know, try and push myself to the next level and keep playing because, and sometimes you get a bit frustrated as a as a player when things doesn't go your way and maybe it's time to hang up your boots and just move on to the next chapter. She definitely understands that I can only play rugby for so long. And, you know, she was a big, you know, kind of advocate of, you know, no, go out, go to California. Let's do this as a family. We can, you know, always move back to Canada when we're done after that. Um, uh, let's go just enjoy some, you know, sunshine rugby. Like we've lived in the UK for 11 years. All my kids are born, one's born in Scotland, one in Wales, one in England. 
Um, so that's quite a funny thing. Uh, I'm obviously South African, my wife Canadian. So we're from all over the place. And I just thought, you know, schoolings is all that stuff is a bit tricky with the with my oldest right now but i think the life experience we're giving our kids of living in these different countries is you know something we'll never be able to give it to them again so i think we're just you know although we're maybe not getting them settled in their school environment their the life um, rewards that they're getting the learnings from life is is huge and i'm sure you're excited to have them in the coliseum and i want to ask a little bit about that you mentioned you know no no fans not not full capacity anyway but mm. playing in such a historic place when you found out that's where home field was going to be what did yeah. you think I couldn't believe it. I obviously I had to look it up. Like I'm, I'm not too familiar with LA. I've only been here once for like a layover of eight hours and went down to Manhattan beach, just quickly looked at the pier, had food and then went back to the airport. Um, but you know, when you start digging into what the Coliseum with the Olympics has been there and so on. Um, and then the big football games that play the LA Rams have played out of there, the, um, the college football, um, and then you, when you walk around, you see some of the history on the walls. It's just unbelievable. And um, that game day, so we, we went there on the Thursday, I think it was for like a team run, just to kind of get the feels of the of the field and so on, and how the process would work from the team room to the to the field. Um, so everything's wrapped with you know um, college football stars, ex stars, and stuff. And then fast forward to the Saturday, we walk in and there's you know stuff, Giltinis. There's the baby blue and the pink and um you know then it felt like home it um it really felt like home and it's um yeah it was a great experience to play and you know and that feel is literally like a carpet like it is like i could put that in my, in my living room i'll be happy with that <laughs> um so that's amazing for for backs and especially the outside backs we like to have a fast field and that's what we got i would have never thought to ask you about the grass i probably should have but that's like a great <laughs> insider thing that we know now that, that the field is next level quality yes. so i'm glad you have spent significant time with your team now you've got heavy hitters up and down there there doesn't seem to be many holes but for someone who hasn't been able to see you play yet you know one match under your belt but for someone who didn't tune in last week Give me an idea of some of the guys you've got and what makes this team so special. I guess it's hard to explain to maybe the non-rugby fan, but, you know, for people who do understand rugby and they've seen, you know, um, teams like Australia play, um, like guys like uh, Adam Ashley Cooper, Matt Ghetto, you know, Dave Dennis, and then you talk about Super Rugby, Billy Meeks, these kind of guys. Um the guys with huge experience. Um, they're like the Gretzkys of Canada's hockey. Um, you know, they, they're the top of the breed, top breed of, of international rugby players. And yeah, okay. They might be a bit older now. Um, so am I, but um, we all, we also have a, you know, that natural competitive spirit and, and you never want to, I guess the older you get, you don't want to give in to some of the younger players and you almost become more like abrasive in the, in your ways of training and, and playing. And, you know, you got to do a bit extra to you know, stay at the top of your game. But um, yeah, these guys bring a vast, um, vast load of, of, of experience in from different cultures. Um, they've played from, you know, Japan to Australia when played in France and England, you know, so all different cultures and experiences gets brought into our environment here and you nitpick of you know the coaches are good at picking little bits from each club you know and what makes a good club and and that's what's the I guess the beauty of of being in a brand new franchise you know we're like kind of the stepping stones towards what's going to go in the future and we're everything we're creating is history so um, you know back if you I guess if you're in 10 years from now you can look back and say well Hey, I had something to do with that culture they're building in LA and hopefully the team's still riding high um, 10 years from now. Let's do this for you, for those who aren't familiar here in the United States, because as you said, the names you listed and, and it's such an impressive list, maybe it's more for the hardcore audience, but I know that something that Major League Rugby is priding themselves on is bringing in that casual fan, is bringing in the family who, who wants to go do something on the weekend and has an opportunity to watch a sport. Maybe they don't know everything about it, but it's yeah. a great experience, right? You're not only entertaining them, but there's a lot going on and, and it's exciting. Like it's really exciting. It's completely different than traditional American sports. So tell me about you. Like, what can we expect to see from you uh, this season? 
it's hard to talk about myself, but like, I think the guys I mentioned, you know, those are the guys who are your key decision makers in the game. They know how to read the game. They know how to create, um, you know, kind of uh, overlaps. In rugby, we're always looking for overlap, you know, two players against one defender. Um, and hopefully I'm the guy that's on the wing, um, being the last guy to carry the ball over the line. Um, so, you know, I, you know, I like to get abrasive. I'll get stuck in when, when there's a bit of scraps going on in the field. Um, but also like the, you know, the high flying kind of plays, you know, um, I really like when we do strike moves. So those are for the non-rugby fans, anything that comes off of a, a scrum um, or a line out, those attack plays, those first phase things. Um, I find a lot of joy in that. And, and there's no better feeling when you actually can score a try off of first phase. So um, that's kind of what I, I guess that gets me going. Um, that's where to look out for me. And, and hopefully I can add on to the few tallies and keep uh, putting the ball down for the team, for my teammates. No one ever likes to talk about themselves, but when you have a performance like yours, my friend, you'll just have to get used to it and enjoy that. But I think one of the things you, you guys always do the best of, I think in this league in general is, is spreading the love and making sure to give those who deserve the due and the credit, always giving the credit to your teammates. It's so team forward. And last one for you in this you know, moment is the next match. So Seattle, Sunday, 8.30 Eastern on Fox Sports West at home. It's the two time MLR champions. So yeah. what are you looking forward to? It almost feels like Seattle is a Canadian team to me. Um, I'm really excited to play against them. I think the reason I say that is just because there's been so many Canadian players gone through their system. Um, and like you say, they're two time champions. So everyone wants to knock off the champions. Um, but I think, you know, their whole club was built around the players and, and a lot of my old teammates, Phil Mack, Justice Hears Duru, Jake Kilnicki, um, these kind of guys, and there's, and there's several other Canadians in their squad as well. Um, and that's why I feel like it's a bit of a Canadian team that I can have a go against. Not only to, does Toronto obviously have a team, but these guys are really close to where I'm from in Victoria, um, British Columbia. So it's just over the border. Um, but yeah, I'm just excited to, to have another opportunity to run out to the Coliseum um, and see a few mates on the other side um, against the Free Jacks in the past weekend I had an ex teammate of Josh Larson against him. We never got to battle heads, the two of us, but um, uh, hopefully there's a few more Canadians in the Seattle team. So hopefully I'll be able to get them in the bottom of the ruck and give them a little squeeze or a little giggle. So um, yeah, that's kind of what makes me excited about this game. That makes me excited. That's super cool. Okay. So DTH, it is time for some bonus points. Are you ready? Let's go for it. Dinner with two other guys in the league who don't play on your team. Matt Turner and Ben Lesage. Ben Lesage, an old teammate of mine, uh, Canadian uh, center for Toronto Arrows. He's just, you know, I think he's just a very a humble guy to be around. He's got a great future ahead of in, in, in rugby, um, not only for Toronto, but also for the Canadian team. And hopefully he'll, he'll be able to move on to maybe overseas games. Um, but I just, yeah, it's a good, it's a good conversation. Uh, Matt Turner, I briefly had um, a bit of back and forth conversation with him while in Bermuda for the Bermuda Tens. And I just thought, yeah, he's a quite a stand-up guy. Although his role there was more to be in part of, he was part of the organization. So it was a bit tough to, you know, I guess be on the same level. But um, I think with the things that he's done for Seattle is huge. And um, his rugby background is uh, something that might be a good conversation over over dinner. Who on the team do you think oh. rocks the team oh. colors the best? Yeah, it was easy. Uh, Billy Meeks. Um, the guy is just sexy. Like he's just got it. You know, he's got all the style. We call him Scott. He's like a Scott in, in um, New Zealand or wherever they call it Scucks. Um, yeah. The guy's just got it. He's just uh, all about fashion and he pulls it right off. What about your golf foursome with anyone in the whole world? Who's it going to be? Ernie Els uh, being South African pro, I guess. Let's go McElroy and Jordan Spieth. Uh, Jordan Spieth because uh, I wear Under Armour. Uh, he's an Under Armour guy. McElroy's got a lot of good, I think, a lot of good stories with rugby. He's quite involved with rugby at um, at Ulster and in, in Belfast, which is the league I played in. 
Um, and then obviously Ernie Els is just a countryman of South Africa. Classic lineup. I love that so much. So I read that McDonald's is your cheat meal, but I need to know your order. Like, like pretend that we're at the drive through and I just yeah. asked you, what would you like? What's your order? Yeah. So this is a post game meal. Usually when I was in Glasgow, uh, wouldn't eat upstairs. I'd just go straight to McDonald's. Uh, it's a Big Mac meal two cheeseburgers and six nuggets. So that was a nice one. I have to ask, is the blonde coming back this season at all? If it was up to me, yes, but my wife hates it. Um, she just keeps telling me I'm not a young guy anymore and start, I start acting your age. So, um, so depending on how brave I am, we'll see if it comes back. What do your kids think that your job is when, they, when, when they're with uh, somebody you have a kid who's old enough to to know right and yeah. how how do they describe what you do funny story the baby she's two um now obviously she knows i play rugby but when she sees the canada flag she thinks that's rugby that means rugby so she sees a canada flag anywhere in the world she says daddy's rugby um so that's kind of cute um so she understands i play rugby i guess <laughs> i love that they know that that is actually yeah. amazing and super cute yeah. we'll have to maybe give her a new flag to help her associate yeah. rugby with more <laughs> things right <laughs> who has adopted the la lifestyle the fastest probably luke burton uh, he's one of our centers um again another good looking fella um, stylish I think these Aussies probably are the ones who are he's an, he's an Australian guy but I think their their way of life is pretty much what California way of life is so I think that's probably why I would say he's adopted the lifestyle of, of uh, a bit of flash and glamour here in, uh, in LA. Do you feel like there's something about your team or um, you that that we have to know this is basically you know it's a kind of a first introduction to the squad yeah. and and yourself um you know getting this much time with you is there anything that i i didn't ask that you think we got to talk about probably the only thing i would i'd like to add is just that you know this is a journey that's just started um that we're all very excited about we're you know we're creating a family here in this in this team that we have um and we're all super pumped for our our own families to join in everyone's kind of there's drips and drabs of our families joining the squad and it's you know it's really nice to see like even for tonight we have a, a bit of a quiz night and all the families and kids are welcome in it as well so we're trying to build a real team environment with the LA Giltinis and I think that's that's vital for me to say um, for future players who want to join this club that you know we want to take care of our families off the field and make sure that they're happy and comfortable because that we know that's gonna you know have the effect of the players and to enjoy their rugby here and in, in LA and um, and then for the fans that's out there for those in LA that's listening uh, I know this is a big city um, there's a lot of people here there's no reason we can't start filling that stadium on this uh, I think it's 17th of April is our next home game um, that we're super pumped to have fans I think April, as of April 1st, we can start having fans, but our next home game is, I think, 17th of April. Um, so, yeah, we're really, really excited to have some of our friends, families and fans to come out and support us and really build a rugby community here in L.A. I think there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of youth programs, there's a lot of, you know, kids rugby in the in the, um, in the whole district here or counties or what do you want to call it, state. Um, so um, it's now time that you know, we all buy in and let's get behind the Giltinis and um, and then make it your home team. I love that. Amazing. I totally agree. There's always room for more in LA. And I think yeah. that, you know, it's, I first of all, grateful for your time. Absolutely. Thank you for this. And just excited for you and this new team. Honestly, you guys made an incredible mark, you know, first weekend, opening weekend in the books. And I think everyone's pretty stoked to see what else you guys have up your sleeves for the rest of the season. So sure. thank you. Thanks for the interview, Danny. I appreciate it.